Welcome to Hallett's Language Channel. Today I would like to introduce to you Dr. Brian Nord, known to many of you as one of the leading authors and minds, if not the mastermind, behind the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, which came out in 2001. Brian North has been promoting and developing the idea of a Common European Framework of Reference from the beginning, since the early 1990s, and he has been continuously involved in developing the descriptors for language proficiency in various domains and in validating the scales. More recently, <clears throat> he has been working on a companion volume to the European framework, which is not a mere complement, but also revises some of the competence areas and descriptor scales, and even adds new competencies like, for example, plurilingual and pluricultural competencies. On the occasion of a symposium on the new companion volume in Gießen in November, organized by the research network Educational Linguistics, I have had the opportunity to talk to Brian North and interview him about the philosophy and the innovations of the companion volume. Right, thank you so much for allowing us to ask you a few questions. You can give me a talk this morning on the companion volume, and with, which provided us with a lot of insight. That's what I understood, at, at least. And I'm saying that against the sort of the background in Germany, the common European framework of reference for languages has been dominating everything right. in the language uh, policy field, also educational policy mm -hmm. field, and even as we heard this morning, mm -hmm. uh, migration policy. So it's yes, it's been a a complete change of what we do language learning business. And now uh, you've come up with the uh, companion volume. Um, published in the final version in 2018. Right. Well, that's the final version. <clears throat> the final version will be the IFBN version, which comes okay. out around Christmas. Ah, okay. So we're, we're, we're close. Anyway. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, of course, it's, it's difficult, I know, because in light of the talks, uh, your talk this morning, but what would you say, what, what is uh, the, the, the innovation that the companion volume brings, you know, in, in, as compared to what you did this morning to the traditional right. framework? Well, first of all, I, I'd like to say we haven't invented anything completely from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the context of language learning has changed a lot in the last 20 years. So there are a lot of aspects um, in the CFR 2001, for example, on the plurilingual education mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. the idea of plurilingual profiles, that people had really not picked up on. And um, there were aspects of mediation which were hinted at in the 2001 text. The 2001 text is not a straightforward text. Um, people have compared it to the Bible. You know, each time you read it, each time you read it, you find something new you had no story for. Um, and it, it has a knowledge, as it were. It, it, it betrays the fact that it's written by three or four different people. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not a book you would go to bed with, you know. Okay. Um, yeah. mm. So there's stuff in it that people have not noticed. So what mm -hmm. we have done is to bring these things out. Mm -hmm. And um, in particular, really, uh, to, to put more emphasis on the concept of the action oriented approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the way that we present mediation is very, very linked to the action oriented approach. Mm -hmm. It's putting those two concepts together, which in the 2001 um, edition was not the case. They were kind of laid out or mentioned. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't really say that mediation is much more than mentioned in 2001. There's only like two or three paragraphs um, about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So the, the interpretation of the of mediation is broader. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the, the whole intention is to try and broaden the focus on yeah. language education. That's why I would read it, yeah. We hope that in doing this, we will repeat, you know, to a certain extent, the success of, of what happened with interaction in 2001, we hope, will, will happen with yeah. uh, with mediation and, and the plurilingual aspects, plurilingualism, and the way the two things interact. Because um, mediation is virtually impossible to separate from plurilingualism, and plurilingual is. behavior is very difficult, if not impossible, yeah. to separate from mediation. So the two are intricately linked. Yeah, uh, that, that's my observation. It's uh, the, uh, the whole um, framework and the concept has become, it's, it's been, it's, and it's yeah. been broadened 
also open up, but of course that makes it more complex and, and, and yes. more difficult to, as, as you pointed out this morning, yeah. to identify the chunks that we'd like to use. You know, it's, it's not so easy. So that's why I, I would be interested in your idea of how we could use, use this very broad and complex framework in teacher education. I, I think, it, in, a, in a way, it represents all of what we need to consider when we teach languages and learn. So every possible factor that we can imagine is actually covered somehow. So, so what do we do with this broad right. concept? Well, um, I think that the, the, the text on the, the key aspects of the CFR for teaching learning is a very should be a very useful document for okay. for teacher training mm -hmm. for teacher education. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the right length of something to give people to read. It's I don't know twenty five pages yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, it illustrates things, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, that's clearly um, the starting point. And mm -hmm. and then there are really two the, the two fundamental aspects. There are three fundamental aspects of the framework. One is the action oriented approach. The second is the levels, or levels of descriptors, if you like, because the descriptors define the levels, but it's basically that thing. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, plurilingualism. And there is an almost inevitable, it's almost a kind of natural order of acquisition that seems to occur in terms of what people find in the CFR. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, everybody starts with the levels every time. And the skills. I mean, in the German yeah. curricula, the four skills of mediation is the, the only focus that's been picked from the framework and it's now been implemented right. well, all over the place. I mean, people pick up on the levels. Yeah. They almost always uh, fail to notice the descriptive scheme. They don't notice that. They mm -hmm. notice the levels, then mm -hmm. afterwards the descriptors. But usually the way that they see the descriptors or have historically seen the descriptors is through the portfolio where there are lists of descriptors mm -hmm. for each mm -hmm. level. Um, Rather than seeing the, a, a, the scheme of reception, production, interaction, mediation, and um, then <clears throat> I guess the the next thing they notice is the action-oriented approach. So the idea of tasks, oh, which because yeah. which, it fits well with I mean task-based yeah. approach was, was already there, um, <clears throat> and then as students are performing tasks, um, students I mean uh, teachers would realize that there's such a thing as competences and we need to competencies and then the idea that there's general competences as well as communicative language competences that you can't really separate and that there's strategies that you need to use and that these can be developed through tasks and then right at the very end they people notice pluralism and they see it seems to be a, a, a well-trodden track that um, yeah, yeah. and that's with these things it's difficult to to change the order so I guess <clears throat> to go back to what I said before, I mean, in terms of the, the things to, I would have thought, to, to emphasize in teacher education, particularly in initial teacher education, or in introducing people to the framework, um, I would have thought the, the things to, to emphasize are the, um, the, the action oriented approach, the fact that there is a pedagogic approach in the framework, um, that um, people have often said that it is um, pedagogically or didactically neutral. That's not quite true. I mean, it's comprehensive. That's not the same thing as being neutral. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you, can dis you can find the description of pretty much any approach to language teaching yeah. Yeah. or to language oh, testing yes. in the framework. Um, but that doesn't mean it's neutral. It, it, has a, it, it promotes, the, the CFR promotes the action oriented approach. And, uh, and the idea of tasks. And in terms of uh, assessment, it, it also pr promotes an idea of, of improving the quality of teacher, teacher assessment. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I, I must say, I'm, I'm uh, involved in a large project currently in which we develop uh, in, in, in that philosophy very much rooted uh, interactional discursive scenarios. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, that and then uh, yeah. conduct in the classrooms. Yeah. And, and the one obstacle that I always come across is the objection that they don't see where the language is. You know, so, oh, that's nice to do, but where's the language? You know, that's, so they are, they're so much stuck in that um, thought, in that mindset, 
that goes in so grammar structures and, yes. and, and, and you know and, and and there's nothing yeah there's no, nothing wrong with grammatical structures. Oh no 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 grammatical structures. The fundamental point is that you don't remember grammatical structures unless they have some personal significance. And a way to give grammatical structures a personal significance is to mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. learn them in the process of doing yeah. something. In, in a functional manner. In a function that yeah, you actually, yeah, yeah. ah, I need this, this language which I didn't have before in order to be able to do what I'm trying to yeah, do yeah, in this yeah, task. Yeah, yeah. And, and that you're more likely to, and, and I mean, you're always more likely to remember something if you write it down. Uh, yeah. So the idea of, you know, the classic mm -hmm. PPP mm -hmm. approach was to give students homework at the end when they write sentences with the new language. The act of writing the new stuff that helps you to remember it. Oh, yes. And that's even greater if it is combined with a creative aspect that mm. you are actually producing something. Mm. Yeah. So this is the fundamental idea of the action object approach. It's yeah. not saying grammar is not important. It's saying you will remember the grammar better if you actually use it for something personally meaningful, that you will remember the, the, you remember the incident when you use this language, and then you will remember the language better. I agree completely. Because it's the core of the philosophy of the project in Germany, right. you know. This and is and this is the most important aspect oh, yes. to the yeah. CFR, uh, and this is where teacher education should start. Oh yeah. Oh, and sure. then after that, you've got the idea of the levels of descriptors. Watching videos, and the second line of approach, watching videos of uh, students talking together, not not interviews, students talking mm. amongst mm. themselves, mm. and. Um, and tr trying to assess the, the CFR level of their students and why, you know, in terms of discuss, yeah. discussing together um, in, in relation to a set of criteria, uh, what, yeah. who is which level and why. It's a very enjoyable activity. It is. I mean, I've done this a lot and I've never met anybody who doesn't like it. Uh -huh. um, the most important thing is that you don't ask people what they think. Because it's not a, because people may be shy or they may yeah. be thinking about what the person next to them is saying and not give their mm. real judgment. And then mm. um, it's important that you allow people to um, to not give their opinion. That you kind of ask you know, groups to report back. Yeah, yeah. Or something. So, yeah. so not to expose people yeah. who might get it wrong yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. But the if provided it's done in a sensitive way like that, the the, mm. the, the process of watching students interacting and assessing it is, is, is really good fun. And it's usually quite amusing because there are things happening in students' <laughs> it is, which, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. which are always unexpected and, and quite fun. So, and from there you can move on to the descriptors for each level mm -hmm. and start to talk about um, what, is, what, what is the place of, of level and, and all this mm -hmm. kind of thing. The most sophisticated is plurilingualism, which is the other as aspect, yeah, yeah. which is this idea of, the, of language ability language proficiency being, a, being a, an, an integrated thing, that you don't keep languages in separate compartments, mm -hmm. and that one needs to leverage the knowledge of one language in learning the next. I, I suppose there's a long way until we, <coughs> we, we reach that uh, idea, yeah. and what it means in teaching a particular language. There's almost, uh, from what I see, uh, no a concept that makes it possible to teach in the English classroom plurilingualism. You know, it's 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 not that. It's it's not available. It's it's, it's very difficult in teacher education. Well, so. I think the fundamental reason is that the communicative approach has taken over an awful lot of baggage from behaviorism oh, yes. without noticing. Oh, yes. um, because um, before the communicative approach, there was a lot of. I mean, contrastive analysis was very popular. Um, and it was perfectly normal for, for language oh, teachers yeah. to make comparisons yeah. between the mother tongue and the target language when they were teaching. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since the communicative approach, it yeah. basically, um, the communicative approach very quickly became inextricably linked to direct method and behaviorism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. And this is completely, under, the extent to which this is the case is totally underestimated, yes. um, mainly because, well, it's certainly in the in particularly in the English language industry, um, where people are only oh, yes. happy yeah. um, to be able to say, oh, other well, languages don't matter. I, I'm afraid that digitalization and digital testing will see a strong revival of the behaviorist uh, attitude, because we have that takeoff thing, you know, yes, or, yes or no, right and wrong, 
and uh, credits for right, you know, so I, I'm afraid that we, are not, we haven't now overcome this way well, of thinking. It's maybe it's uh, returning. This is one of the reasons why most language learning apps are useless. Like Duolingo, you know, Duolingo, I mean, if you try to use it, Duolingo is a waste of time. Okay. I mean, it's, it's useful at the very, very beginning, <laughs> just but it, it operates yeah. mainly on a vocabulary level. It does, <laughs> which is ages old, you know, as you, as you say. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's flashcards, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. 2000. But it, this, this uh, brings me to uh, one point that I'd like to address, that is the impact of digitalization on language learning. From what I see, I suppose, uh, it, it, it's such a transformative uh, potential in, in, that, in these digitalization processes that we need to rethink much of what we have understood to be communication to date. And probably, probably uh, it, it concerns every single issue that we have been developing for so long. That's, but what, what is your uh, take on that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not an area, it's not my area of expertise. Um, I mean, certainly the online, the new online scales yeah. are, are describing language activity still. They are not describing digital competence. They are describing um, the kind of thing that somebody can do in a oh. in a multimedia yeah. in a multimodal okay. environment. Yeah. In it's part of the interaction. It's still, approach, but, yeah. it's, but it's still uh, it's focused on language. Yeah. yeah. What they can what they can express mm -hmm. or how they can deal with. But it's not it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's not the digital aspects that are included. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the language aspects. But <clears throat> um, clearly. Uh, the aspect which is still under under specified in a word like the, the CFR, as in any tests or any frameworks that exist, um, is the fact that people write in a completely different way now to the way that they used to write That's say, right, yeah. 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. That basically uh, when you write something, particularly in, a, in an academic context, it's more a process of collage, you know, you're kind of yes. grabbing yes. pieces from different yes. places. Also graphics, diagrammatic exactly. language, and you use a lot uh, of that. And you, but even in terms of straight text, um, I don't think there are many, very many people around who still write an article from the beginning to the end, yeah. the way that, yeah. that they used yeah. to write an essay oh, yeah. when they were at school. And, uh, That's how you were probably yourself, you know. Yeah. Right? I mean, you find you have chunks of text or you write this bit, you don't, it's more like the way that films are made. Films are not usually made in the same order as they are shown. And in fact, um, it's, it's only, it, um, it's only uh, directors who are wanting the characters to, who, who are co-developing the characters with yeah. the actors, yeah, yeah. who bother to, to film in the chronological sequence. Mm -hmm. um, the way films have traditionally been made has been, has been to shoot scenes, these, these, and then in the end it's put together in the right order. Exactly. And nowadays people write more like that. Yeah, yeah. And so they write this bit, that bit, that yeah. bit, they grab this bit from there, there's this from that project proposal, they stick yeah. it together, and then they start yeah. to yeah. clean it up. Yeah. I think that's a very precise description, because it, it all points in that direction that we need to reconceptualize even the most basic skills that we yeah. believe we've been able to describe to date yeah. as mm -hmm. we need to teach how to read a hypertext. It's completely different from yeah. reading a linear text and so forth. Yeah. We're running out of time, unfortunately, so thank you so much for, uh, for, for a, a glimpse, we could say, at the companion volume. And uh, our tip would be, it's all there for you to read. Read the companion volume. Thank you very much. Thanks.